Hello everyone. Thank you for watching Edupedia World videos. So this is the continuation video of the previous video about performance tuning. Okay, where we have discussed about the tuning of the database access read, that is tuning of the select statements. In this video, we learn about the tuning of the update statements. Okay, the write, update and modify statements. So here we have to keep three things in mind. One is the synchronous and asynchronous update of the update task, the locking and the packet size like how much amount like which we are inserting, updating or modifying. Synchronous and asynchronous update. With synchronous updates, the program that outputs the statement commit, work and wait, it waits until the update work process outputs the status of the update so synchronous means in sap okay so the first part is the processing is done by the dialog work process and if there are any database updations those are hand over to the update work process okay so when when there is a synchronous update okay so when we say commit work and wait okay we say commit work and wait then the program which runs in the dialog work process it waits until the update work process finish the finish the processing it has to wait with asynchronous updates the program that outputs the statement commit work it passes the update onto the update system and does not wait for the update process to respond so here we say only commit work if it's synchronous we say commit work and wait if it's asynchronous we say commit work so the dialog work process is, it doesn't wait for the update part to be finished by by the update work process it just hands over the task to the update work process and it resumes its processing local update in this case of course the program has to wait until the update is finished so we have three types of updates the synchronous update okay commit work and wait where the the dialog part of the program has to wait until the update part is completed asynchronous update it, we say only commit work where the dialog part it hands over the update processing the update work process and it continues with its processing the last one is the local update so here also it has to the dialog the program has to wait until the update is finished by the update work process asynchronous update is useful when the response time for a dialog transaction is critical if you are running a transaction in a background work process asynchronous update offers no advantage asynchronous updates are used in bundling several updates into one in order to support data integrity so asynchronous update is useful when uh, uh, the response time for dialog trans uh, tra tra transactional processing is critical. If we are running a transaction in background uh, work process, then there is no we we will not find any importance with the update work uh, the asynchronous updates. Okay, and several asynchronous updates are bundled in one order and are updated together to support data integrity. That's why when we run anything in dialog okay so we use asynchronous asynchronous update so that the dialog when we get an when we encounter an update statement the dialog work process it hands over the task to the update work process and it does its activity okay if we are doing something in background then there is no advantage of this asynchronous updating okay and all the asynchronous updates okay they are collected they are bundled and kept as one and they, are, and they are executed in an order to support data integrity. Now, below are some guidelines on the criteria to use asynchronous updates. So, when to use and when do not use asynchronous updates. Dialog transactions that are performance critical. Okay, use asynchronous updates. Batch processing since asynchronous updates offers no advantage. There, we need not use asynchronous updates. Data integrity that is multiple table updates involved under one commit mass updates since you do not want to engage update work process for a 
long time okay so if we want data integrity that that is like a multiple updates are under one comment then we give it to asynchronous updates okay if we have mass updates okay then then in this case when we do not want to engage update work process for a longer time okay so they need not use asynchronous updates user exits where already updated lu W logical unit of work is used and asynchronous are used for RFC calls specify cases where confirmation is desired by the caller process okay so uh, asynchronous updates where to use and where not to use okay use in dialog processing not use in batch processing use for data integrity okay multiple updates table updates under one commit do not use when we want when we have mass updates okay we have to use where user exits where already have an update luw is used and do not use rfc calls okay specific cases where confirmation is desired by the caller process like asynchronous means the dialog does, doesn't wait for the confirmation from the update okay but here in rfc calls we want the output of the update okay so in that case we have to wait and get the acknowledgement so in that case do not use asynchronous updates okay so this is about uh, asynchronous and synchronous updates now lock the purpose of sap locking is to prevent more than one transaction to change the same data on the database simultaneously so why we go for the locking concept to maintain consistency okay so the database has its own locking mechanism similarly sap has its own locking mechanism we have studied about the nq work process in our uh, first sessions of this training okay so uh, it's the nq server is generally the central instance or the primary application server okay so that takes care of locking we can have we should have at least one NQ work process or we can have more than one NQ work process. Okay. So the, the concept of locking NQ mechanism is to maintain consistency. Lock table is a table in the main memory in the central instance that records all current locks. Okay. So we have a lock table on the application server where the NQ work process are configured okay so this lock table maintains the information about all the locks too many locks could lead to lock table overflow limit set by profile parameter in q table size the number of locks are set a uh, maximum thousand per program so we have to set a limit to the number of locks which are held by a program so generally it can be thousand or whatever it is depending upon the business value depending upon the business okay because if too many locks are created then the memory will overflow okay lock as much as necessary but as little as possible okay so we have to this nq mechanism okay the developer should take care of nqing and dequeuing properly when they write the programs lock as much as necessary but as short as possible lock as long as necessary but as short as possible okay default scope parameter 2 okay should be sufficient for both asynchronous and direct updates for asynchronous asynchronous updates the locks are released after the update process completes no need for explicit dq for synchronous updates and explicit dq is required so what is synchronous and asynchronous updates Synchronous means the dialog work process waits until the update work process completes its task and returns the information back to the dialog work process. In an asynchronous uh, mechanism, the dialog work process simply hands over the update task to the update work process okay, and it carries on with its work. So, in asynchronous updates, we need not specify ex explicit DQ. Okay, if we NQ, that's enough automatically they'll get dequeued but if it's a synchronous update then the nq should be accompanied by a dq okay for rfc calls a connection close 
would remove the locks in the target system hence no need for explicit DQ is required okay so when we talk about RFC connections okay when the connection is closed the locks in the target system are automatically released so we need not specify explicit DQ so this is about a lock mechanism okay so when the developers they write the programs they have to take care about this enqueuing and dequeuing properly okay so whenever they uh, give a statement enqueue depending upon whether it's asynchronous or synchronous locking mechanism the dequeue should be accompanied with the enqueue okay and they have to limit the number of locks okay that's generally uh, restricted by this particular uh, profile parameter okay so we have to set the maximum number of locks a program can hold okay so this is about the locking mechanism the next one is packet size in case of updating large volumes of data into database we can use packet sizing technique to reduce database load this is done by breaking the total data load into specified data packets okay see we have large volumes of data updations okay then we this packet sizing comes into picture so here the total data is broken down into different packets and we maintain a packet size for that example 1 lakh records are there each containing 100 fields have to be updated in the database instead of updating it once we break it in smaller packets size of 20k which will be updated in 5 iterations okay so that's what when a program has to uh, upload some data or fetch some data from a table huge tables so another way of tuning the program is to introduce packets so that the entire data is not fetched or updated once rather it's 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 broken down into small pieces which will reduce the the load on io or cpu or whatever it is okay if it if it's lengthy you have to upload all this data in one shot it it will be a tedious task okay not only uploading like if you want to fetch the data or whatever it is okay wherever it is applicable whenever we are working with huge data we can introduce this packing mechanism where we will divide the data into small chunks okay so there we introduce the packet size so in the, so in the program we can write the packet size okay so it depends on the program there is no particular limit for that so you can introduce a uh, packet size whenever it is applicable and whatever size uh, it is good for the program okay so in this performance tuning part 7b so we have discussed about the write okay whenever a write query is there to the database like updates or modifications what are the things we have to take care so that the program will work better will be efficient the first one is the synchronous and asynchronous update locking and the packet size so in synchronous and asynchronous updates okay in synchronous updates we have commit work and wait okay and asynchronous we only have commit work where the dialog work process doesn't wait for the update work process okay and we have third one is the local update and and next we have discussed like for it to use asynchronous asynchronous updates and where we should not use this asynchronous updates okay so these are the different examples where we can use them and where we don't use them the next one is the locking okay so whenever there is an update or a modification statements okay we have to lock okay so there the, again the the nq should be followed by a dq or not depends upon the update whether it's asynchronous or synchronous update okay so lock goes with an uh, update only so depending upon the type of update happens we have to write the lock also in such a way in the program and other thing is like we limit the number of locks which are held by a program otherwise it will cause the lock table overflow condition okay so the locks are checked from transaction sm12 okay so we are supposed to do it in our daily monitoring and we have to see whether there is a lock table overflow or not and 
from sm12 only you can go to the history okay of the logs say like if overflow happened today or yesterday then we will uh, that that is recorded in the log okay and say like if we have noticed that this particular pro program is causing log table overflow then we have to then we have to find out like what is the issue which has caused the log table overflow is it because like huge data was fetched or like something the pro okay generally it happens because huge data is fetched okay so whether that huge data was manually input or the program is fetching huge data so we have to tune the program or we have to tell the users not to select such such huge data in one shot okay so that is again comes into the basis administration part okay and this locking writing of nq and dq maintaining nqs and dqs in the program is mostly done by the developers abap developers okay so they have to uh, be cautious while using this nq and dq statements and every nq should be accompanied by a dq whenever it's required okay you have to release the nq whatever nq statements they write they have to again release it with a dq statement and in rfc calls once the connection is closed the the logs are automatically released we need not specify explicit dqs and the last one is the packet size so when we do updations and modifications okay instead of doing updations and modifications on the data okay on a huge chunk of data we divide the data into small packets okay so it is the performance will improve when we work on smaller chunks okay okay we we do it say 20k records we do five times rather than updating 1 lakh records at the same time okay so in this way we have to tune our uh, abap programs to make it more efficient okay thank you